Okay, China, let me get this straight. Let me let me just ask you a quick question. Why did you spend government money? Hold on, this is pretty dangerous. Why did you spend government money on speed cameras on an unpaved road? How is anyone going to break the speed limit here? The potholes are like at least six inches deep. What are you doing? Come on! Seriously, you couldn't even try to break that. What are you gonna, are you gonna go street racing in your Ferrari in this? I'm gonna pause it right here. So, welcome everybody to another episode of ADV China. And today we're talking about the infrastructure lie. Why'd you really come here? It's Christmas. What? You know, and, you know, sort of, stuff. Derek. Thanks. Merry Christmas. This holiday season, give the gift of Nord. When we're online, we're never not using a VPN. And the VPN that we choose to use is Nord VPN. Super simple to use and it encrypts your data, keeps it safe, kind of puts it through a tunnel so that people can't see what you're doing online. Nobody wants to lose their credit card information. Nobody wants people peeping in from the outside seeing what they're doing online. Privacy is a huge concern for most people, including us. Also with NordVPN, it's really cool because around the holiday season, let's say you're trying to watch some Christmas movies. A lot of streaming services have them limited or they move them off to a different platform to try to make extra money. But what you can do with NordVPN is hop to a different server in a different country and actually access that information or video for free. Go to nordvpn.com slash advchina. What you're gonna get is a massive discount off of a two year plan. And you're also gonna get an additional month for free. So give the gift of NordVPN this year, nordvpn.com slash advchina. Behind us, by the way, is a chief kind of, uh, I guess you call him a transportation police guy. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. gonna come talk to us. Uh, maybe we can talk about that a little bit uh, while it plays out in the background. But basically, Maybe you can explain about motorcycles and highways in China. So motorcycles are not allowed on highways in China. Highways are like, if you're a tourist in China, that's all you're gonna see. And they avoid anything that China doesn't want you to see. It's basically like pristine countryside between two cities, right? And if you wanna get on the highway, you're gonna cover a lot of distance in very little time. Unfortunately for us, when we're traversing the entire country on motorcycles, we're not allowed to use them. Yeah. So there were times where we would, uh, not sneak on, just try our best. Try it, try, try our best. Just trying. pretend like we don't know. Yeah, right? yeah, we tried it. We and got away with it once in the past. Kind of. Well, not really. We snuck on and they, they were shouting at us and we just kind of went, but then we realized it was a big mistake and we got off at the first exit. I, I rode my motorcycle on highways in Inner Mongolia and we got in trouble one time and I never did it again. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to do it's, it. It's pretty scary. I mean, look, there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, uh, most motorcycles in China are very small uh, CC, mm -hmm. you know, um, like a 125, 250 is like the highest you really can get. Uh, and that's mm. the cops have those. In certain cities, though, like Shanghai and Beijing, they have like a special exemption where you can have a big motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a Harley. And, yeah, and those specific areas, they will allow you on the highway with like a special permit. In those areas. Only in those areas. But you can't like take your Harley from Beijing or whatever and go down south somewhere and mm -hmm. then try to get on the highway. They won't allow you. It's a weird system. It's one of those things in China where they kind of have a law that says you can do it, but you can't. It's also, uh, if you're w really well connected and you're massively rich, you can do whatever you want in China. Absolutely. It's one of those things. You're allowed to do things if you're wealthy. Yeah. I mean, look, so it's a twofold thing. Number one, the motorcycles can't really keep up with uh, highway speeds because they're crappy. And number two, it's an image thing. 
Remember, the highways in China, it's all about image. That's where the tourists are going on there. That's where the rich people are going on there with their cars. You know what I mean? And they don't want to see filthy motorcycles on the highway. They think you know? they're poor. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So this guy was actually really nice to us. Yeah, he was. He was us. really polite. Because what happened was we first came in there and, you know, you got the booths and we asked, there was a, a lady in there, we asked her, hey, look, can we go on the highway? Because sometimes in these rural areas, they you think know. you can kind of get sometimes away with it. Sometimes they don't know. Yeah. And she was like, go go park on the side there. I'll call my manager. And this guy came over and we had a chat and he was like, absolutely not. No. You may not. We were like, but... No. You know, the road back there is really dangerous and terrible. He's like, well, that's, that's just life. Sorry, but, you know, if I let you on here, it's my ass on the line. And I get that. Yeah, it's so. not his fault. No, it's not. So anyway, uh, we thought we'd uh, show you just how this works. Because when you're talking about the big highways, China looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. It does. We're also going to show you that it's not always fantastic. Bridges and stuff collapse and so on, which are part of the highways. But it's only around the big cities that you really see the good infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually was on the subreddit the other day, mm -hmm. and people were talking about, I think a lot of them have been infiltrated by like CCP sycophant types. Yeah. But they were talking about how uh, Taiwan is amazing, Taipei is amazing. And then somebody chimed in and said, well, it's amazing, but Taipei looks about 20 years behind compared to Chinese cities. And mm -hmm. I was flabbergasted when I read this because not only is Taipei much richer than sure. any Chinese city, mm -hmm. hand, hands down, yeah. but it's also more developed for a long-term infrastructure, sure. right? What they're talking about is actually these new buildings that spring up everywhere. Yeah. It's and I mean, new stuff. Taipei right? does look ramshackle if you go around. Like it's, it's much shorter buildings. I wouldn't say ramshackle. I'd say it's an older city, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. China is is full of these new, brand new cities with tons of new concrete buildings everywhere. Yeah, and yeah. it looks newer and it's got a lot of lights. Sure, right? sure. To me, it looks shoddy and cheap. Mm. Um, if you really look between the lines. Oh, yeah, I've, of course. It's kind of just a, a fancy facade. Yeah. But anyway, long story short, the... Uh, infrastructure of China is very few and far in between if you really go between places. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you're traveling around China, you actually want to see, talk to real people and normal, go to normal places and stuff. You're going to see the in-between. Yeah. And that's what our documentaries were usually about, was the in-between. Yeah. Right, what is the real look, the, the China, real yeah, China? Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, by the way, you can now see the road that we were trying to avoid by getting onto that highway. Um, and that's why we were trying to sneak on, because it was literally hundreds of kilometers of this. Hundreds. And... You know, the you've got these disgusting trucks, right? Just absolutely construction trucks. They carry building materials. They carry coal. They carry, like, livestock sometimes. But these trucks aren't allowed on the highways either. So they have to take these uh, G roads, as they're called, which is the Guadal. Which, which is are very important. Dude, it's a national road. Yeah. That's what Guadal means, national yeah. road. They have to take these national roads. And this is a national road. And they destroy them because, you know, they're just crappy trucks. And this is kind of far flung. It's out of the city center, so they don't get maintained. And you can see just the level. Of I'm what's gonna going to be totally on. honest with you too. This is not that far flung. No, you know, not. it's not. It's pretty close to a major city, which we end up in. Yeah, this was like a hundred kilometers out of uh, Yanji. The problem is too is that you might think this is an outlier example, but this is just a daily smattering of what we went through in China all the yeah. time. And this, it's not, a lot of it's not changed. We still have friends there, and they say, "Hey, those G roads where you ride motorcycles on, they still look like this, right? right yeah, exactly. they don't get pr priority because mm -hmm. there's no reason to prioritize. No, they'll priority them. prioritize the high speed rail or the the highways. However, there's there's one of those trucks, by the way, that yeah. we're talking about. However, they will prioritize things like speed cameras and stuff. They legally, from the central government, will yeah. have to put up all these things. Yeah, like so speed you, yeah, cameras you saw that in the beginning. Random. It's that, super random. That kind of speed right. camera slash traffic counter right. uh, boom over the road. And I mean, it's ridiculous. It On is, that but that's China. Doesn't that make so much sense? In yeah. China, it's so half ass and weird. Like, that's why you'll hear, oh, the infrastructure is great. We've set up this massive network of speed cameras everywhere. But look where what it actually right. is. Or we've set up this huge solar farm that doesn't point at the sun. Yeah, right? exactly. Or it's not connected to <laughs> or anything. Or it's not connected to anything. Yeah. Anyway, so we want to get into the, the infrastructure lie. Yeah. Well, uh, recently, a bridge collapse in Hubei province. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, as, as soon as I see stuff like that, I feel oh, uh, I feel really bad for the victims, it's obviously. It's terrible. I mean, it's we, awful. Don't forget, we came across uh, trucks that mm. are just completely overturned and, you know, because of bad the, roads. The, and there were deaths involved. And, yeah, you know, it's, it's terrible. We see this all the time in China. And you see that when you explore China, when you're yeah. not on a chaperone tour right. on a high speed rail or on the highway in a tour bus or something, right. you know? Yeah, like when you're out with state media and they're taking you around on these sponsored tours. Yeah, you'll never ever see you're the shielded. real infrastructure. If you're on a high speed yeah. rail, you're not seeing actually how China operates, no. right? You go from one infrastructure point to the other where the tourists go, where they want the 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 
foreigner to walk around and see the most amazing things and eat the most delicious foods. Yeah, exactly. The average Chinese person doesn't live like that, right? So a lot mm -hmm. of death and destruction, especially on the roads. Yeah. So when anyway, when I see the bridge collapsing, unfortunately, I've been so desensitized to this that I say, oh, again. Yeah. Because that's the thing, is that a lot of this stuff doesn't get coverage. Mm. You see something like that, it makes national news here in America. Yeah. But with a bridge collapse like that, Winston and I look at that and we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. That happens all the time. And yeah. we're talking about places like that just don't get news coverage, right? Sure. So thankfully, people had a bunch of cell phones and they uploaded it immediately and it was able to leak out. Yeah. A lot of times what will happen is people won't find out for a little while. And by the time they show up, they don't let anyone film it or or they'll completely use algorithms to stop certain clips and pictures from being spread around on WeChat. I mean, remember when they had that high-speed rail incident? Mm -hmm. They actually tried to bury, bury the carriages. With people Bef in Yeah, it. before anyone could come and film yeah. it or anything like that. They just buried them. And with the victims in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they literally buried them. And yeah. they've done the same with sinkholes. Yeah. Yeah. Sinkholes is, oh, are a everywhere. huge problem in China. And they've done situations where cars get swallowed up and people get swallowed up and, you know, they can't retrieve them, obviously. Sinkholes, they just bury them. Sinkholes is interesting because mm -hmm. what happens is you say, oh, it's a, China usually tries to play this. Oh, it's a natural phenomenon. Well, it's not because you're supposed to hire people that know seismic activity and understand geology to go survey an area. Yeah. And they say they do, just like with the elevator stamps. Yeah, they stamp exactly. the elevator as being safe and then it'll collapse because they, they didn't go actually pat, inspect pat it. pat the ground and they're like, oh, this feels yeah, solid this enough. Feels, they don't even do that. No. Oh, sure. You know, they Photoshop someone into it and they're like, yeah. the world renowned geologist came to check this area out. Meanwhile, these sinkholes open up and they swallow everything around them like monsters. Yeah. And you'd say, oh, it's just nature. Oh, China's on some bad geology or whatever. No, they build normally on these horrible, horrible areas. And you get a you get it to a point where sometimes buildings will actually just topple over like dominoes. Yeah. Not crumble, they'll actually just fall. Yeah. Because they're built on uneven ground with seismic activity. Yeah. Or completely silt or muddy kind of uh, Or just bad foundations. Or bad foundations. Mm -hmm. And they just tip over. And that's something that Winston and I saw quite often. It's not mm -hmm. just, it doesn't have to be on this massive scale. Go through a village, whole roof of a, a top of a building would be on the ground. Yeah, slide exactly. off. Yeah. I mean, look, it's bad construction. It's poor uh, quality materials that are used to do this rush construction. Because that's what China does is they build hard and fast. And they just kind of make sh take shortcuts all the time. Mm. Also, a lot of these sinkholes are because they're busy building underground tunnels yep, for like subway too. systems and things. It's not done correctly and it can lead to this kind of situation. Of course, in the important first tier cities, they're going to take proper precautions so you get less of this. But it's when you get to the more rural parts of China that a lot of the rules get bent and broken. And unfortunately, I will flip that on its head because look what happened in Harbin yeah. with that bridge. It's the middle of a tier one city, yeah, actually yeah. a provincial capital completely collapsed massive uh, suspension bridge yeah and yes you're right though the average uh, tier one city is going to get more priority but that's how scary it shows you how scary it is in some of these rural parts mm -hmm. it's not like they're being made of like like bad bricks and twine and stuff it's because they're cutting corners yeah. with construction quality in general so it'll look good it'll look like a normal bridge you'd see in america or sweden yeah. or something but it won't be made of the same stuff. Well, not only that, if you look at the pictures of that uh, Hubei one where the bridge has collapsed, you can't even see any rebar sticking no, out anywhere. No. So what was actually connecting the bridge to the pillars? They're probably trying to save money. As yeah, they usually probably do. just kind of put it on there and like, oh, it's kind of balanced. It's okay. They're, they're, oftentimes they'll make the siding of buildings out of hollow concrete blocks, yeah. right? which they've caught them doing that multiple times just to save money. Sure. It's horrifying. And then yeah. it all slides off. So, I mean, look, not good. the fact of the matter is China's very good at putting up this very shiny facade mm -hmm. when it comes to, um, you know, infrastructure, buildings, things like that. But remember, at the end of the day, there's very little oversight and quality control. So when the, uh, like a shortcut can be taken to save some money or time, it absolutely is mm -hmm. taken. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look, this kind of thing happens within the borders of China all the time, but it's a bit worrying as well because it's spreading around the world. Maybe you can explain. So the Belt and Road Initiative is where the Chinese government is putting, um, what's it called, infrastructure initiatives into other countries, especially third world countries around the world, poor mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if they're using their best stuff domestically, where they care the most, right? Mm -hmm. And you're seeing all this inf infrastructure collapse and all these big issues, then imagine what's happening in countries in Africa yeah. where they're doing Belt and Road stuff, where they're building bridges, they're building dams, they're building uh, Rail, railways mm. that's where the real issues are going to crop up in one one to ten years you know of course. seeing this kind of madness happen within china yeah and it happens a lot the thing is it's not little isolated incidents mm. i absolutely love how the ccp sycophants and so on every time you mention a collapse in china of a building or a bridge they're always like oh that florida you know the florida mm. building the that collapse building, yeah. they, that's the only one they can throw out because there's only one 
It doesn't happen that often in America. No, no. But the thing is, it does happen very often All in China. All the time. So, I mean, the fact that we've ourselves, with our own eyes, just the two of us riding around China, have seen collapsed buildings, collapsed um, infrastructure, roads. and, you know, roads, these terrible roads and stuff. It means that it's pretty common if we've seen it multiple times. You know mm. what I mean? Uh, never mind the news that leaks all the time where you see that these big bridges falling down and crushing cars and doing all this terrible stuff. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a very good situation. And it's just that lack of oversight, really. And so, yeah, the Belt and Road Initiative countries, they better watch out because that stuff that China's putting in there, probably not going to last. You yeah, know? Agreed. Anyway, just for every shiny building that goes up in China that you see in the news and every new high-speed railroad or any big highway or lovely, beautiful road that you see, because there are many yeah. good roads and many good buildings in China. But remember, for every one of those that goes up, there's also a crappy one going up in a more rural part that's kind of just out of your view. It's in the periphery over there. And it's, again, the people of China that suffer. When these bridges collapse, there are always deaths involved. Mm -hmm. Whenever these buildings fall down, whenever any of this infrastructure sinkholes, people die. Chinese people die at the end of the day. So they're the ones that really are hurting the most when mm -hmm. it comes to this mm -hmm. crap, you know? Absolutely. Anyway, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching again, guys. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, you know the drill as always. Unlike the crappy infrastructure that China puts into the rural, more far-flung areas of China, and sometimes even in the best cities as well, stay awesome.